on the Saul Chin Aftercar team will be taken by number 25, Barry Dooney. So Barry Dooney will take the vacant position on the Saul Chin Aftercar team. Otherwise, both teams will play as selected and as they appear on your match program. Hello everybody and welcome here to Pierce Stadium on County Final Day. The county final between Saul Kilnock, Nakara and Killer Aaron. The West play the North for the right to win the 2004 Tommy Varden County Championship Final here in Galway. As the band out in front of us strikes up Galway Bay, we'll take a break for a moment. I'll run down on the two teams. Killer Aaron is playing as selected. In goal, Alan Kane, Damien Flaherty, Michael Mitchell and Michael Nicholas in the full back line. The half back line is Kevin Courtney, Tommy Joyce, and Derek Heenahan. In the centre of the field, Tommy Hughes and the team captain is John Wilson. The half forward line on the right is Paul Miskell. In the centre, Nicky Joyce, and on the left, Thomas Flynn. Top of the right, Ali Wilson. Full forward, Tommy Wilson. Top of the left, Tommy Ryder. And the Hughes just coming in over Pierce Stadium that Galway have won the Brendan Martin Cup for the first time, 3-8 to 11 points, a great day for Galway, it's just a pity that the powers that be didn't decide to postpone probably this game, I personally believe they should have, I make no secret of it, it was an All-Ireland day for our girls, but it's congratulations to the Galway management, PJFA, I'm taking the All-Ireland back to Galway, another trophy comes west of the Shannon, and this time it's the girls in the maroon and white. Line out of the Saul Tilt team, in goal is Brian Fitzpatrick. Right back, David Burke, full back, Finneen Hanley, and on the left, Danny Boyce. The half back line on the right, wearing number 25, is Barry Dooney. Into the centre, the son of the great John Morley, that's Gordon Morley. And on the left is Rory McTiernan. Along the park, you David Gilmartin and the team captain, the Mayo man, Morris Sheridan. Thomas Crow is Seamus Crow is right half forward. Hurler come footballer is number 11, Alan Kerrins. And on the left, Saul Tills Jewel, Sean Armstrong. Top of the right is Paul Kennedy. Full forward is Connor McGowan. And top of the left is Shamey Rabbit. That's the line out of the Saul Till team from 1 to 15. The team being managed by Owen Donlan. Killer Aaron, of course, being managed by the one and only Billy Joyce with selectors there, Pat Devan along with Billy and um, Stephen Flaherty. That's the Killer Aaron backroom team. Killer Aaron seeking today their fourth ever title. Salt Hill seeking today their second title. They won the crown in 1990. They're appearing in the final for the first time since 1993 when they lost down in June to a great Cordofin team around that time. The rain, thank heavens, has stopped in Pierce Stadium. There's a fresh breeze blowing up to the city end of the ground from the Bourne, the Troy end, right down here to the city end of the... Redden team today without the master, Parik Joyce. The best footballer I've seen in Galway for over the last 40 years, Parik Joyce. The full-back line on the right will be David Burke, at full-back Kenny and Hanley, and in the left corner back position, Danny Boyce. The right half back position will be taken by number 25, Barry Dooney, at centre half back, Gordon Morley, and in the left half back position, Rory McTiernan. In the middle of the field, wearing number 8 will be David Gilmartin, and partnered by the captain of the team, Morris Sheridan. The half-forward line on the right will be Shavey Crow. At central half-forward, Alan Kearns. And in the left half-forward position, Sean Armstrong. And then on the inside line, in the right corner, we have Paul Kennedy. At full forward, Connor McGoran. And in the left corner forward position, Shavey Rabbit. And the other panel members are Connor McGinley, Austin Concannon, John Boyle, Audrey Ryan, Greg Begley, Jacqueline Burke, Kamal Spur, 
Noel Terrell, Marty O'Connell, Fergal McCann, Sean Flaherty, Philip Cox, Stephen McGuire, Derek O'Flaherty, and Matty Sill. So, Chin Curran, Born the Thaw, Knock the Carnock, Mar Arauni Weed, Mar Wilshi Dara Clor, August Mar Pusnoi Sheep, and Kippa Shock. Sets of management fees for their cooperation again on the sideline with the field steward, and we will ask the substitutes to take their place on the seats allocated to them on the stand. <laughs> in their sky blue and navy. So we will ask you now please, Shasagi, Lehaya, Oron Navir, Marsha Badale. The Passery Brass and Reed Band. other Porrick Joyce about to get the 2004 Tommy Varden County Senior Championship Final here in Galway underway so the Castle Reed Brass and Reed Band leaving the arena here at Pear Stadium on this county final day for the year 2004 looking around Killer Air and the playing up into the city end in the first half and Salt Hill play up into the Bourne at end here at the fine state-of-the-art stadium that is Pierce Stadium, just Galway. Just to remind you again, there's just one change on the Salt Hill Arctic Carra team. Barry Dooley, number 25, takes the A and other position at right half time. So it's great to see Barry Dooney, who played county football with Galway through the league campaign earlier on this season, an All-Ireland under-21 panellist as well a few years ago, He's on that team, and out there in the middle of the field, the referee will about to get this match underway. Morris Sheridan hands them the football. Backs going back into their positions. We're looking around to see where they're playing. Nicholas Joyce is on the 40. He's been policed today by Gordon Morley, the centre half back from Salt Hill Knock the Carry. So the Pierce's man, Porrick Joyce, gets it as Morris Sheridan gets it and sends Salt Hill Knock the Carry up into the attack, but the ball will beat. The number 10 out over the sideline, a line ball to Killer Aaron on the far side of the field. Despite the best efforts there of Jamie Crow to get to it, he couldn't, and it'll be a line ball. First line ball of the match, and it'll come, it'll go to Killer Aaron. Killer Aaron were champions in 76, 78, and 99. Salt Hill won the title back in 1990 and reached the All Ireland final. What a great Salt Hill team at the time. Players like Mark Gibbs and, of course, Neil Finnegan. Right now, it's Barry Dooney, our row number 25 on the Killer Aaron team there. That is Porrick Joyce. 
inside now to the full forward. He looks for a score. It's the first score of the game. It is the first score of the game. Popped over by Tommy Wilson. And would you believe it? Number 25 there on the Killer Aaron team. Warwick Joyce. Tommy Ryder is the man replaced at number 25 by the master himself, a man who has scored nine goals and 154 points in championship football. Referee there talking to both Porrick Joyce and the corner back there for Saul Till, David Burke. Nine goals and 154 championship points, 10 goals and 146 league points at Inter-County for Galway. The best player I said I've seen for over 40 years one of the best players I've ever seen playing for Galway are for Killer Aaron. Linesman then calling the attention to the referee and just telling them to cool it down. Early stages where Tommy Wilson has hit first blood. It's one point in for Killer Aaron and to no score as the goalkeeper then Brian Fitzpatrick takes the kick out and he drives it down the middle of the field towards the stand side. Up there right for it. Ball breaks loose. Picked up there by Alan Kerrins, the jewel and the crown with the hurlers of Galway. Alan Kerrins brought to ground. Alan, who scored three goals and five points at Inter County in football. I don't know his hurling stats, but he scored three five in championship football for Galway. Lovely fella, Alan Kerrins. The ball driven in there. Michael Nicholson was back there, but it's the Salt Hill boys that have it. Their number 10, Shamie Crow. Crow then. Look it up for the wing back is. McTiernan, Rory McTiernan looks for a score. It's a good one from Rory McTiernan. It's a fabulous kick. It's gone high over Alan Kane's press ball. And the sides are level. Would you believe it? Two minutes in. One point Killer Aaron and one point Salt Hill. Just in two minutes into the first half of this county, Tommy Varden County sponsored final. The championship final it says Alan Kane. Holder of an All-Ireland medal, a Connacht medal, you name it. Ball in the selfie, Tommy Joyce in there, Tom the Bomb as he's known. Salt Hill break quickly, takes a quick free up into the corner, number 12 there, Sean Armstrong. <laughs> Sean the County Miner. And he won a free, got a knock there from Michael Nicholson back there. A gentle tap on Sean Armstrong. <laughs> Top scorer in this year's County Miner campaign. And that's Conor McGowan then. He was a part of the team that last appeared in the final way back in 93. <laughs> Conor McGowan, an awkward angle. One metre in from the sideline on the 20 metre line. Far side of Salt Hill. It's Pierce Stadium and that ball goes up in the air. It drops around the 13 metre line. Fist going for it. Breaking ball. One of the Wilsons is back there. Back there also is the corner back. And now it's number, look at back where number 12 is. Tommy Flynn, Flynn getting it further out the field. Out over the sideline, line ball, Saltel. Danny Boyce going to take it, instead he's leaving it to Morris Sheridan. Rory McTiernan who got that fine point for Saltel, he's holding his back but he's all right. Good player is Rory McTiernan, another part of this Galway minor team as Shamie Rabbit drives that ball dangerously across the goal. Oh, it's gone wide, a forward coming in there. The defender just closed him, the ball went wide, but good cross there by number 15, Shamie Rabbit. Some lads saying Haley Mary in the crowd as we watch the kick out from Alan Kane. Over the far side of the field. Together there by Tommy Joyce, known as Tom the Bomb up there in Killer Aaron, and he drives it now for Nicky Joyce, son of Willie. Great footballer, Nicky Joyce, 117 in the league campaign gone by this season. And Nicky Joyce from out the field has got the legs, it has the accuracy as well, but it came off the post. And down waiting for it was Danny Boyce, nothing in front of him, he clears it out, but he made a, a sort of a bad job of it really because he had plenty of time to get rid of it, and Killer Aaron lifts the siege again. Horrick Joyce slowing you down. What a lovely player. In now to the full forward, Tommy Wilson. And he's selling his man the wrong way. Going in then Tommy Wilson. Trying to sell a dummy and the referee penalising him for selling the dummy because he held on to the ball too long. 
And Finney and Hanley, this fine young full back, he won't feel he'll be the county full back in the next couple of years. Finney and Hanley out now to Gordon Morley. <laughs> Further out the field. Morley then. The Mayo man sending that ball through the centre. And they're now looking up for the corner back is number two, Burke. Cross to the st Alan Kearns. Alan Kearns to Conor McGarn. Score on for Conor McGarn. And the tie is up. It's over the bar. A good movement there by Saul Taylor. Alan Kearns was involved. He fed Conor McGarn, who picked off his chance very nicely. Those teams met on the 9th of May this year in the group series in Chum. One lovely Saturday evening. Saul Tilworth, 10 points that evening. Killer Aaron was 12. It was a great game, I recall, back in that fine May evening. John Wilson went to the clouds, goes to ground, wins himself for free. Two points to one. Aaron. Tom Joyce then. Nice one from Tommy. Looking for Tommy Wilson. Not Tommy Wilson, it's Ollie Wilson. In fact, it's Nicky, trying to get in behind his man. Oh, a lovely lay on to Tom Joyce. Tom had a fantastic game the last day, but he took his eye off that ball and... Dooney didn't. Dooney wins a free out. Free out there to Barry Dooney for Saul Till. Saul Till who produced, of course, Niall Finnegan and Liam Salmon down through the years. Salt Hill knocked Nicara. They were known then as Salt Hill. Now it's their number 13, Paul Kennedy. Ball going hither and thither, feet going in, free going Salt Hill's way. Bad ball. And well cut there in the centre of the field by Tommy Higgins. Now it's uh, Tommy Wilson for Killer Raven. Tommy Hughes got that one to Tommy Wilson. Tommy Wilson from out the field. Has it got the accuracy right under the crossbar, but Fitzpatrick was all alone. He dealt it. He gives it out now to Morris Sheraton, and Morris will come away from his own defence. They're certainly playing here, there, and everywhere. Right now it's Rory McTiernan. Toe to hand. And. Free will go Killer Aiden's way. Rory McTiernan ran into his man there. I don't think, I think that was a pure accident really from up here. But Ollie Wilson goes to ground. Referee's talking to Rory McTiernan. Is he going to go for a card? Yes, yellow card then too. Number seven, Rory McTiernan for that foul. But I thought he was a little harsh because I felt he was going... For the Blues ball now, Sparrick Joyce. Great to see him back after his injury to Tom Joyce. Nowhere to go, trying to turn, and then he turns and drives a high one in. That's going to go wide. Sparrick feeling that Tommy should possibly have left that ball back to him, but Tommy went for his own score, and who would blame him? He just put it wide. Ryan Fitzpatrick placing it on the edge of the little square. Thomas Hughes and John Wilson doing quite well in the middle of the field up against players like David Gilmartin and Morris Sheridan. And it'll go down the channel now. Gilmartin rises for it. Ollie Wilson, he's a ball of fire, a great player, Ollie Wilson. The referee penalising Ollie Wilson. Porrick Joyce decides to throw the ball back to Rory McTiernan. For Bohren a throw. Saul Till knocked Nakara. Two points to one they lead. Nice ball in behind the Killer Aiden defence and well won back there by the Killer Aiden wing back. Kevin Courtney. Over the sideline, line ball going Killer Aiden's way, but good work there by Kevin Courtney, number five. Bad line ball, and now it's Saul Till coming into the attack. Kennedy. 
Alan Kenton's. Kenton's goes for a shot. A great save by Alan Kane. A good shot. It's gone for a 45. Good stop by Kane. And there was a chance there for a brief moment that Saul Till would get in behind the cover. They had a chance of a goal. And now instead they get a 45. Good save, Alan Kane. In there in the goal. The Barney Jarrick man, Alan Kane. Shot coming in from out the field. There's a shot going high and going over the bar from Alan Kern. Scored a goal and three points in the semi-final. Took that one very well, a short pass, and the man from Claren Bridge knocks it over the bar. Three points to one then. Alan Kern's the scorer. Right now I feel Bill Kelly will be happy. His salt till seems to be going quite well. Picking a lot of the, up of the loose breaks. John Wilson, the, even though there's not that much loose out there, not with John Wilson around. Tommy Joyston. There isn't a puff of breeze out. We were promised to store him. We've got a camp. Horrock Joyce in full forward. Finney Hanley breaks it down. The goalie had to be alert and he gets it out now to the corner back. Danny Boyce has picked up an awful lot of ball and Danny going in a solo run. To McTiernan, who's very much in this game. Rory McTiernan driving it up the field, but driving it with air out over the sideline, far side of the field. Line ball going Killer Aaron's way. Three points to one. <laughs> Nicholas Joyce trying to get a flick on it. The ball beats both Nicholas and Gordon Morley out over the sideline, over the inline, sideline, and every line, and it's a kick out for the goalkeeper. This pitch here in Pierce Stadium is very big, there's a lot of space in it. I feel the tighter ground of Tune Stadium or Cora Finn possibly suit Killer Aaron a bit better than Pierce Stadium. It's a very wide open space and you need to be very mobile to get around it. Three points to one then in favour of Salt Hill. Yeah. Breaking ball. Gil Martin is doing well, catching a lot of them out around the middle of the field. Conor McGarn tries to reach that ball, but back there getting it instead is Paul Miskell, and Miskell done well there. Well won, Paul Miskell. He went down on that ball, won it well, wins a free as well. The referee's taking out the notebook and just ticking Conor McGarn. Ollie Wilson. Tom Flynn. Hughes to John Wilson. And John Wilson gives it air. A nice one up looking for Nicholas Joyce. Gone off. And I feel it went off Nicholas Joyce. Yes, it did. It's a nine ball for David Burke and Saul Till. Gordon Morley further up the field. Saul Till moving quite well. Alan Kearns. Referee gives him a free, causing all kinds of problems. They're running, Alan is running after Killer Aaron defence, causing problems, and Killer Aaron want to get much tighter on him. And a free then to Saul Till knock Nicara. Morris Sheridan to take it. The side from the city against the side from the country. Gordon Morley. In fact, no, it's Conor McGowan. He should have given that one out, and Morris Sheridan has it a shot from Morris Sheridan. It's high, it's up, it's over the bar. Great move there by Saul Till knock the carrot. They had a confidence to take it on. Conor McGowan got a lucky break, his second bounce. He fed Morris the second time. And you don't give Morris Sheridan that much room because he will punish you. He puts that one higher over the bar, four points to one. <laughs> Willie Joyce out making switches. That switch you see around that area where Saul Till are getting the break. Something has to be done out around that centre back position. In the middle of the field, Morris Sheridan, David Gilmartin. Mediocre. For some strange reason, this county final hasn't really ignited into what a goal would do for it now and really get it alive. Barry Dooney. Shimmy Rabbit. The Rabbit runs. He runs over his marker, still being chased. Shimmy Rabbit. Shane Armstrong drove that one across to Alan Kedden's all alone. And Kedden's toe to hand. 
Looking back for the corner forward, and Kenz has got in behind him. Alan Kenz then chips one up. Too much pace, balls wide. That was a quick kick out, one of the Kildare killer Aaron lads down in the field. I didn't see what happened. I was still talking about that score that might at Saul Tilnock Nicara might have got, but something must have happened because the referee's looking taking the number off Shamie Rabbit, Ivera Coog Jig on the boat Saul Tilnock Nicara corner forward. Alan Kane then with the free and he hits a mighty one. John Wilson will run and run. The ball will also go over the sideline. The Salt Hill player, Gordon Morley. What a great player the late Gordon's father, John, was on the Mayo team of the late 60s, mid 60s. And Tommy Joyce, the player of 2004, sends a beautiful ball in. Great cut to Nicholas Joyce. What a ball from Tommy Joyce to Nicholas Joyce. The chance of a score. That has to be a score. That's looking good. That is a score. High up and over the ball. From out there, Nicholas Joyce had the confidence and he popped it over. Four points to two. But it was the kind of a ball, the ball that Tommy Joyce just left it right across the But You have to give credit to Nicky. He had a bit of work to do and he took his point well. <laughs> Nicholas Joyce, another one of the Joyce land there from Killer Aaron as the goalkeeper drops the kick out Patrick down the middle Morris rises Wilson breaks Michael Nicholson goes in he, a good work there by Nicholson but he's got it a second Tommy Joyce in the Porrick Joyce and Porrick Finneen Hanley is with him and Finneen Hanley was hanging on to Porrick Joyce young full back against the experienced full forward so Portic Joyce then, as he's known down in Kerry, of course, as Portic, Portic Joyce. <laughs> Has got the distance, it's not going to go over, it's going to go to the left of the left, upright and wide. 99 out of 100 times you could chalk that a point. That was the 100th time it went wide. <laughs> They're looking for another football. That ball went to this. One, two, three out now on the field. One is going to do, and it's the goalkeeper from... Brian Fitzpatrick then to kick out. One ball will do. There's three out there at the moment. The looking around to see where there's any switches. It's hard to know where they're playing. Michael Nicholson is wearing number four, but he's up here wherever the number 13 um, Paul Kennedy goes. He's been followed by Michael Neal Nicholson. As the ball comes out in the centre of the field, there's a lot of bunching, and now Kennedy's away with it. Kennedy to Kerns. Mitchell, the fullback, was done well there. Mitchell has the ball down, and good work there by the fullback from Killer Air, Michael Mitchell. Hughes then to Flynn, to John Wilson, toe to hand. Back to Flynn again, Thomas Flynn. On a solar run, loves to do that, had a great game in the quarter finals against um, Milltown, and now it's Tommy Wilson. There's a high one in the court for, for for Tommy Joyce has gone in full forward. Score chance at oh Tommy, what will you do? No one coming in to support it. Finney and Hanley, Gordon Morley. Between them, they map the danger up and the relieving clearance. Goes to number 10, Shamie Crow. On the solar and under the stand here, Shamie Crow. Back to Kennedy. Getting familiar now with the players. The little Gil Martin to Kerns. Alan Kerns, the holder of an under-21 hurling medal 
an All-Ireland, a minor medal, he was goalie in 94, a senior All-Ireland winner's medal, and of course he won a county medal with his own hur and hurling with Claren Bridge just two or three years ago. Dave Morris Sheridan in now looking for the full forward, breaking ball. But back there getting it is number 10 is Paul Miskell. Courtney then getting it further up to Flynn. On a solar on the pitch is so big, it's so far away from your pair. At times you don't know, we know Nicky Joyce. Nicky's been chased by Gordon Morley, still Nicky Joyce. On to his right foot, it's a lovely one from Nicky Joyce, it's a great point. It's a great footballer, Nicky Joyce. He knows exactly where them two posts are. Over the bar, three points to Killeraden, four points to Salt Hill, not Nick Harrop. About 20 minutes then into the first half of this, the 2004 championship. The years are flying, you're inclined to go back into the 90s when you say it. Well, it's Alan Kearns. And Alan Kearns there and uh, Tommy Wilson. Bit of an accident really there. Teddy Kearns there, the uh, linesman on this stand side, talking to the referee. Tommy Wilson appealing, I didn't intend anything, He's only, it was only just a push. Let's hope Alan Kearns played a hurling game yesterday, actually went into extra time when his car and bridge were eventually beaten by Sarsfields in that hurling championship played in Galway yesterday. Alan is up, he's all right. A good round of applause there for Alan Kearns. Gordon Morley then. And the referee there, Porrick Joyce, was very sensible because that wasn't a foul of any danger. Right now it's coming through as Barry Dooney. He, he overplayed it, Paul Kennedy was back there. And Paul Miskell playing very well back in the half-back line, winning that ball to Porrick Joyce, and it's a long one. Look down now, looking for Tommy Joyce. Has still Tommy Joyce, and he wins the free. The referee, no alternative there. Barry Dooney went in with the shoe. There's no doubt about that. He's taking out the notebook and awarding a free to Killer Aaron. But what a ball pumped up there by Porrick Joyce. And a chance for Nicky. Willie Joyce out there in the middle of the field making changes. Number seven there on the um, Killer Airden team, Dean Heenahan. As Nicky Joyce takes the free and it's gone all the way over the bar. Three from three from Nicky. A holder of a Sickerson's middle with IT in Sligo and a holder, of course, of an All Ireland under 21 middle. Nicholas Joyce. Four points Killer Aaron, four points all till. The game has livened up, the breeze is freshening up. We've played about 23 minutes of the first 30. 30 minutes, I think, inter county, our uh, club football, 35 inter county. Lads, I'm not sure. The kick out coming from the goalkeeper. Tis 30 for club games. Alan Kearns. A thorn in the Killer Aaron team, Alan Kedden from Salt Hill, Knocknacarras, it's Morris Sheridan. Morris Sheridan, a bell man originally. Kennedy. The rabbit is down. Right now it's Conor McGowan taking that pass from Kennedy. The rabbit is still down. Out to Kennedy. Kennedy then. Going in along the end line. Courtney's back there, the ball is fisted by Kennedy, it's fisted over the bar by the corner forward there. Paul Kennedy, five points to four. The man then from New Zealand getting that point for Borna Thraw. It's all tail, knock the car of five points to four. They certainly have them from all parts of the world here in the Salt Hill Knocknacarra team, but they lead in the what matters most, they lead in the county final by 5 to 4, coming up to 25 minutes. 
Referee is ticking the name of number 13, Ollie. Great player, Ollie Wilson. Has been in the wars once or twice. Gets a yellow card. Ollie always gets a Christmas card from Cross Malina. As the kick out now coming from the goalkeeper, Alan Kane. What a mighty kick out. What a great kick out. John Wilson breaks it down the referee. Penalising Johnny was holding on there to Morris Shelton. And Morris sends a lovely ball in. The rabbit. Chip one into Alan Kane and Alan comes off his line with all the coolness. Out out to the corner back. Flaherty, Flaherty to Miskell back to Flaherty. Dean Heenahan then, Dean Heenahan further up the field. Tom Flynn. Thomas Flynn. Tommy Wilson and very hard look there on Tommy Wilson. That ball, he had it under control, it skidded on the ground and he very little he could do. He touched it on the ground and the free will go to knock the carousel tail as the ball goes to Gordon Morley. Morley again, taking that one from the rabbit. Inside to Sean Armstrong. We haven't seen much of Sean Armstrong today. We've seen a lot of Paul Kennedy. And the referee penalising Porrick Joyce or somebody in there for the oldest foul in the book, the push in the back, he's saying. It didn't look all that much from up here, but the referee much closer than we are. And a chance for Morris to increase the lead for Salt Hill knock the cara. Five points to four, they lead Killer Aaron. Okay, One minute then of extra time as possibly haven't looked at the board yet as Morris kicks it high and Morris Sheridan puts Salt Hill knock the cara into a two point lead. They lead six points to four. One minute that's what's going on. One minute then of um, extra time at the end of this first half. One minute added time. There was uh, three minutes in the minor final of added time, and I think there was about six played before the referee finally blew up the whistle. Alan Kane, a long, long ball down the centre of the feet. Tommy Wilson, well, one thing Tommy Wilson will do, he will give 110 as he looks for Nicky Joyce. Oh, lovely turn there by Nicky Joyce. The ball might have the... Oh, hard luck on Nicky, but he love a lovely... Turn the ball just beat him out over the sideline. Of additional time at the end of the first half. Nomad Owen, Erelayed, Ejera, and Keith Lamb. So one minute then left at the end of the first half. Six points to four. Killer Aaron might need a point or two to get back before half time. Willie Joyce will certainly be talking to his troops at half time to up the ante a bit, and I'm sure Owen Donnan likewise to keep Salt Hill in front and what has been an entertaining if not brilliant county final up to now. Rory McTiernan. Danny Boyce. Free out. Won one by Danny there. Whoever comes out of Galway this year will be hoping to emulate what Caltra done a year ago. Won Galway, won Connacht and won of course the Andy Merrigan Cup on Patrick's Day and whoever does come out here today We'll be all hoping they will do the county proud in the games and months ahead, leading on to the Connacht title. Rory McTiernan in the war, wars over there. He's all right, playing well, McTiernan. County minor this year on... Uh, Bunt Roach's team. Alan Kearns. Picking up a lot of loose ball. Still I feel well worth the run on the county team as the ball goes towards the sideline. Over the sideline. Oh, it's kept in play nicely there. Barry Dooney done ever so well there to keep that one. It was going over. Jamie Rabbit in. David Gilmartin. 
three killer iron men around him, make that four, comes back out now to Sean Armstrong, Armstrong from out the field, it's across the face of the goal and it's going to go way out wide, but a good move there, Gil Martin was up on that one. Dispatched it, offloaded to Sean Armstrong, but Sean put it wide. Six points to four. What can Killer Aaron do in the second half? Tommy Joyce is operating. Gordon Morley play, seems to be playing a, a loose roll around centre back. There goes the half time whistle. A very enjoyable, entertaining first half. It may not have sparked to life, but at the moment, Saul Till knocked the carry lead by uh, six points to four. So for the half-time talk, both teams go to their dressing room. They need a break. It's been entertaining, maybe not spectacular, but Salt Hill, Knock the Cara, enjoying a two-point lead here in, on a day when the Galway girls brought glory to Galway. Half-time at Pierce Stadium, Salt Hill. It's Salt Hill, Knock the Cara, six points. And to Killer Aaron, four points. Second half coming up as it unfolds here in Pierce Stadium. Everything set then for the start of the second half. Tommy Joyce is out in the centre of the field. The switch in the Killer Aaron team looking around to see who's gone in at centre back. They're playing here, there, and everywhere in the first half. Hard to. Second half, it's a wide open field, and now it's a two point game as straight away it's Conor McGowan. David Gilmartin. Shimmy Crow. Crow then sending Saul Tilnock Nicaro into the first attack. Paul Kennedy looking for the ball. Crow throws it across into the centre to Gordon Morley. Conor McGowan, Paul Kennedy. Tom Flynn does ever so well. Well won, Tom Flynn. He went back there. Morris Sheridan was going for the ball. Tom Flynn took it and won it, and won it very cleanly. My, Michael Mitchell then. To Nicholas Joyce. And Nicky then, selling him his man dummy, he's going in a solar on. Nicky Joyce going then, toe to hand, trying to get more players into the parade inside out of Portic Joyce. Finney Hanley's back there, Portic Joyce has been brought down, the referee's going in. There has to be a penalty, a penalty to Killer Aaron at the start of the second half, we're one minute into the second half. Finney Hanley, the full back, and Portic Joyce, and the cornerback was in there, they were a clatter of bodies, Porrick seemed to be brought to ground, referee had no alternative, he's pointed to the spot, and it's a penalty kicked in for Killer Aaron and a huge chance to get on, to take the lead in this county final, the Tommy Varden sponsored final 2004, Porrick Joyce to take it. And in the goal there, of course, is um, Brian Fitzpatrick, heaven help him in, in the goal, and Porrick Joyce, the jewel in the Killer Aaron crown about to take this penalty. Placing it now, the goalie walking out. I don't know what the goalie is doing. He came out, he started saying that Porek didn't place the ball in the correct spot. Well, it's, there's a spot there, the 40, 30 meter line, the line in which you take a penalty. So they line the goal then. In in the goal is Ian Fitzpatrick and upcoming, the man coming up on your screen wearing number 25 is Porrick Joyce. A great save by the goalie. It's gone high, it's gone up, it's gone over the bar and the rebound by Porrick Joyce. But there was a good save there by the goalie. 
Cardiff Joyce's record, believe it or not, in penalties. Not as good as normal, but he's, you have to give credit to the goalkeeper. He corrected the side and Porrick was trying to place it into the bottom corner. The goalie got down, saved it, the ball broke loose, and I think it was Porrick who knocked it eventually up and over. Six points to five. Point is better than nothing. The kick out comes from the goalkeeper. Killer in, moving well. The Wilsons, John there to the halfback, coming up number seven. Dean Heenahan, back now to John Wilson. Trying to get in behind his match. Did John Wilson looks for a score? He chips a nice one in the goalkeeper under the crossbar. That penalty will give him great confidence. Out to his corner back, David Bourke. And Bork wins the free out, takes it quickly to Finney and Hanley. Back to Bork again. Back to Hanley again, and Finney and Hanley to Gordon Morley. Morley loses it, but he's been fouled in losing it. A possession then being given away, and it's Salt Hill who pick it up with Alan Kearns. Inside his own half. Dean Heenahan is with him, but Alan Kearns. Back to Paul Kennedy, he's played all over the field. Loses the ball though, took his eye off it. Tom Joyce to Porrick Joyce to Tom Flynn what a ball inside over the top there to Tommy Joyce Tommy Joyce the edge of the diamond a shot from Tommy Joyce it's high it's straight it's over the bar Tommy Joyce levels matters here in Pierce Stadium we're about four minutes into the second half and it's six points all it's game of football on six points Salt Hill knock Nicara six points Killer Aaron Tommy Joyce getting on the score sheet, his first point. Nicky's got three, Tommy Wilson's got one, and um, Porrick has got one. Six points apiece. Centre of the field, hands grasping for the marvellous catch there by Hughes, back to Miskell. That Kennedy is good, Paul Kennedy's wins a free, he's here, he's there, he's everywhere, he has a ponytail as well and he wins himself for free. Free then for Morris Sheridan. Morris who played in three All-Ireland finals but unfortunately he didn't come away with a winner's medal. Played with his native Mayo as he drives his high dropping ball, that's a fine kick from Morris Sheridan. That's a Good kick from out there. Good 40, 50 metres out. He put it over the bar. Seven points to six. Salt Hill knocked the carrot. Go back in front. <laughs> Alan Kane then. The county goalkeeper from Killer Aaron with a mighty kick out. One of the best kicks out inter-county goalkeepers has is Alan Kane, and now it's Wilson, Ollie, Tommy Wilson, a great ball up round of the corner, Nicky Joyce will have to run to keep it from going over the inline, succeeds in doing so, up now to Kevin Courtney, play on to the referee, back outside to Tommy Flynn, inside to Tom Joyce, and he's the one player that can take it by the juggler, right across, but Conor McGowan back there and out to Paul Kennedy and Kennedy is coming away. Nothing in front of him but grass as he goes up the field. Still Paul Kennedy. Shane Armstrong. Brilliantly blocked down there by two or three players and it comes to McTiernan. Nice chip ball into Kennedy. He's everywhere. He's having a fine game. He's a fine kick that time but it's going to go wide. Some of the features of Gaelic football did in the 21st century is the blocking down, some great blocks being put in by both sides. We had it in the minor game, certainly some great blocks in that as well. Seven points to six, Alan Kane to take the kick out from the edge of the small square and Alan won't mind a bit once it's from that, not from the 20 metre line. And another high mighty kick, centre of the field, up they go for a breaking ball, Tommy Joyce. On arena killer Aaron, Tommy going up the field. McTiernan is with him. He gets by McTiernan if he wasn't there. And he wins the free. McTiernan finally fouled him. Thomas Strong. Inside now to Nicky Joyce. 
still Nicky Joyce. To the hand. He wanted to pass it out to someone. He's been surrounded by three, four blue shirts. Finds the all Tommy Wilson, Tommy Wilson, high and a put over the bar. Great score, Tommy Wilson. Good pass from Nicholas Joyce and Tommy sends it over. And the sides go back level at seven points apiece. A much better second half, more football being played, more open. And a lot more movement, but a good offload there by move by Nicholas Joy. He offloaded to Tommy Wilson. He had a bit of work to do, but you have to give credit to Tommy. He gets his second point to this one of this county final. The ball has gone straight out over the sideline from the kick out from the goalkeeper. Sideline on the far side of the field. The tread needle road end of the field over there on that far side. Back to Tommy Joyce. He's the one man that can take it by the juggler. He's a real great player. Tommy Joyce. Still Tommy Joyce. Nice ball inside to Nicholas Joyce. Still Nicholas Joyce. Nicky then trying to turn. Nowhere to go. Tom Flynn comes in in support. Blue shorts everywhere. Back outside now to the midfielder. Hughes done well there. He get it over to, to Tommy Wilson. He'll have a pot from out there. It, I feel it'll carry in around the 14-yard line. Breaking down. Hanley is back there. And also back there is Gil Martin out to Conor McGowan. Lifting the siege for the Salt Hill boys. was up very far there from cornerback now it's Alan Kearns hurler come footballer nice ball inside Sean Armstrong has gone in full forward and he referee penalising the full back a very harsh decision I feel well the referee much closer there penalising Michael Mitchell linesman on the far side coming over Teddy is it Teddy Kearns? He was this near side. Teddy's gone to the other side. I uh, just wonder who the linesman is on this side. Referee is having the hand up calling attention there or talking to number eight on the Killer Airden team. Thomas Hughes. Playing well, coming more into the game. Stephen Flaherty, great footballer Stephen Flaherty, a part of course of the Masters team that won the All-Ireland in 1999. Thank heavens that the midfielder Thomas Hughes is okay and there'll be a free here, a chance of Morris Sheridan to give Salt Hill back the lead. It's 10 yards in from this near sideline. Dennis Ryder is the linesman on this side. Dennis exchanging greetings there with Willie Joyce. Hello, how are you? Right now Morris Sheridan has this from the 45 metre line. It has got the legs all right, has it got the accuracy? No. Dennis, the Kilconley official, refereed the county final of 92, and I think he'd done the county final on that terrible bad day in 2000, when Cora Finn beat an unlucky Killannon team in the county final. That's all of four years ago. Alan Kane from Barna Jarrab to take the kick out, all in red. And one thing Alan has is a kick of a dead ball that's as good as you'll see anywhere. Kennedy, he's mopping up everything. Morris Sheridan. Shane Armstrong. Still Armstrong. Caused a few problems. He's a good player. A great year of the minors. Back to Conor McGowan. The old and the young. And now it's Sean Armstrong. Out comes Alan Kane. Nothing to pick up but the ball. Don't come out too far, Alan. Just get rid of it. And he does to Tom Flynn. To John Wilson. Great player, John Wilson. The captain of the team, Mitchell gets it. Miskell is there. Tommy Wilson is there. There's a lot of bunching going on. David Burke picks it up for Salt Hill to Alan Kearns. 
The shot coming in from the rapid in towards the goal and Alan Kane under the crossbar with all the coolness. To Michael Mitchell, John Wilson, Tom Wilson. These Wilsons are great footballers. Tom Wilson going away. Tom Joyce. Kicks it off someone's rear end but Gordon Morley wins the free. Rory McTiernan. Sean Armstrong. In towards Conor McGowan at full forward. He's gone in there playing everywhere. It's hard. There's a lot of miss. The shape of the game at times doesn't. And a free out. Penalising Alan Kerns there for trying to. Or Conor McGowan or someone in there for trying to tunnel in. And that won't be allowed. It's a free out and Alan Kane will take it from outside his own 20 metre line. Handbag stuff out in the middle of the field is there. The referee's out there. One of the Kilraden players down injured at seven points apiece. We played 14 minutes, about 14, 13, 14 minutes of the second half. Seven points apiece. <laughs> How about going over to John Mulhollands and putting a few pounds in the game, ending in a draw? Speaking of Mulhollands, of course, Alan Mulholland, a great player with Saul Till down through the years in Galway. And a great sportsman as well, Alan Mulholland. There'll be. <laughs> Kevin Courtney's up, he's all right. The name is good. Well done, Kevin. You're up there. You're all right. Alan Kane takes the kick. They build them tough around Kilrair, and they do so in the city of the tribes as Morris Sheridan to this Rory McTiernan. That's a nice young footballer. You'll hear a bit more of Rory in the next couple of years. The corner back goes back there, and the ball goes out over the sideline. Is it a salt hill line ball? The referee. Are the linesman Teddy Kedden says yes. From up here, it's hard to know. <laughs> Morris Sheridan. Five yards in from the inline, on the sideline, far side of the field. Morris Sheridan. He will drop it in around the 20 meter line, 14 meter line. It's, he drop it under the crossbar. Oh, Alan Kane drops it. Where is it? I thought it was a... Was it very close to got a foot behind the line? And the referee awarding a 13 metre free. But that ball came in. Alan Kedden's caught it. There must be a breeze out there because when it left Morris Sheridan's boat, it looked to it hang around the 13 metre line. It dropped right under the crossbar. It was close. And very close from going over the goal line. Sean Armstrong hops it high and over the bar and Salt Hill knocks the carry lead by eight points to seven. And Willie is walking up down here in front of us. Urging his team on. Looking at that stopwatch. It will tell him they're halfway through the second half or beyond it. Eight points to seven, a low scoring Tommy Varden County final and Alan Kane will drive this free or this kick out. Looking for Kevin Courtney, Michal Nicholson. What a great player Michael Nicholson has been. Now it's Tom the Bomb. Joyce going up the field. Tom Bomb Joyce going up and driving it up now to Nicholas Joyce. Porrick Joyce. Every time he gets it, Finney Hanley's a tight full back, but Porrick Joyce is a master footballer. Back out now to Tom Wilson. Bork will keep him there. The way they pack up in the blanket defence, Porrick Joyce. Off his right, right into the. Um, Around the square, the back's a bracket. Was anybody was doing a pim pom in there? It could have gone into the back of the net. Free out to Saul Till, but Porrick Joyce chipped it one right across with his right foot. No one's coming in, and the ball was hither and thither to Sean Armstrong. 
Barry Dooney. For Saul Tinnock, they carry on a high dropping ball in around the 21 yard line. Out comes the cornerback and the cornerback. Flaherty, don't ever so well to Courtney, to Flaherty, Flaherty. To Tom Flynn, back in Flaherty. To Wilson. To Joyce. Tommy Joyce then. And the referee penalising Tommy Joyce for foot up. Tommy explaining I was trying to pick the ball. Referee says, the referee is Joyce as well. Poor it, Joyce, he said you weren't. Number 18 warming up there and the coming on to the Saul Till team. John Boylan replacing Paul Kennedy. John Boylan is in, Paul Kennedy is off and Kennedy had a great game, he ran his so heart out. The Saltine after the Carra team, uh, Paul Kennedy, number 13, has been replaced by number 18, John Boylan. So John Boylan entering the frame here in Pear Stadium. Eight points to seven as Morris Sheridan, wind assisted, drives the free in around the defence. Getting it out there now is Nicholson, John Wilson. Tom Joyce, Tommy Joyce then. And that's the place to give it. Air and space. And air and space is Nicky Joyce. Far side of the field, going up the field. Still Nicky Joyce. And he wins a free. A great run through the defence there by Nicky Joyce. Eventually he ran into the brick wall of Saul Till and the brick wall it's a free into Killer Aaron. Killer Aaron having that many players on the inside line when the ball does come in, Porrick Joyce is isolated in there on his own. Porrick Joyce then to take this vital free. Porrick who scored 10 points in an All-Ireland final. This is the county final and that's high and that's over the bar. Porrick Joyce the scorer. Eight points apiece. Twenty-one minutes, nine minutes, and there will be, of course, I feel, four or five added minutes. The fourth official will put up that board. He won't put it up for another eight or nine minutes. Fitzpatrick's kick out is long. Tommy Joyce having the his usual blinder out there in the middle of the field. Nice one up for Nicky Joyce. I think Nicky needs a helicopter to get her that one. It's gone out over the sideline. Up there, Teddy Kearns is running fast to get it. It'll be a line ball to Salt Hill. Back on their own 30, their own 13 meter line. Gordon Morley. Rory McTiernan. Free out to Rory. Had a good year with the Miners, the Miner team that was so unlucky to lose out to down in the knocking out stages of the All-Ireland Championship. Back now to Finneen Hanley, the full-back. And it'll be a free to uh, Salt uh, Killer Aaron ball over the sideline. Line ball and a line ball then to Killer Aaron and going over there to take it is Porrick Joyce. Porrick, who was nominated, of course, as captain of the Aussie Rule of the Irish team to play the Aussie Rules in the game coming up in the next week due to injury, had to pull out. Right now he has the ball. Right now he chips a high one right across on the 13 meter line. Tom Flynn working his heart out, his socks out. Good Bork. Bork is with him. Back inside now to Hughes. Hughes to uh, Miskell. Paul Miskell didn't take a score, Paul. It has the distance. Oh, hard luck, Paul Miskell. He could have done. That one could have gone in, it just went wide. Eight points apiece. And them seats behind the goal have the winter look about them. The cold feel as you look from the stand here, the seats. On this big hot summer's day in the month of June, they'd be shining, they look a bit cold in October. The goalkeeper to take the kick out. Fitzpatrick. Tom Joyce feels marvellously, giving Gordon Morley all kinds of problems. Poor Joyce. 
and Porrick and Finian Hanley. Finian Hanley will have to keep cold sight of him. Not that way, Finian. That's a free end and a chance for Killer Aaron. The boys from North Galway. Eight miles east of Tume Town then. Killer Aaron have a chance to take the lead and a chance for Porrick Joyce. Willie Joyce, Stephen Flaherty, Pat Devan. Porrick Joyce, he tugs the jersey, makes the mark. Come on, come on. Chance then for Porrick. It's high, it's over the bar, the lead for Killer Aaron. From Porrick Joyce, as good a player as I ever seen. Putting Killer Aaron ahead by nine points to eight. And listen to the Killer Aaron supporters. Twenty-seven minutes gone. The photographers from the Herald and the Connacht Tribune down taking photographs of the crowd. Down under the dugout and the kick out comes. The last seven or eight minutes of whatever is left will be excited as feather there. Paul Miskell. Tommy Wilson, the man who works over in Mayo, he used to, and I think he still works there. Alan Kerns going back from the hurling into the side. He hurls with Tanbridge, and right now it's Mara Sheridan. Nice chip ball inside. It's pace and legs. Michael Mitchell done every so well to shepherd that ball back. He's got Kevin Courtney in his outside. Courtney and himself nearly messed it up, but Michael done well to get the return. Lift the siege for the Men in white and red nicks as the clears go down the middle, down towards the far sideline. Porrick Joyce, two salty lads collided. Let's hope they're all right right now. It's Porrick Joyce. Still Porrick Joyce, slow you down. To me, all Nicholson. Back into Porrick Joyce. A goal! A goal! Nicholas Joyce has scored a goal! Nicholas Joyce has crushed the ball to the back of the salt hill. Knock the car in it. Nicholas Joyce, the scorer. One goal and nine points to eight points. One nine to eight points. And I remind patrons as well that the man of the match, which has been finally sponsored by Radio Nevada, will be selected by the Radio Nevada personnel on duty at the game with the assistance of the Connacht Tribune reporters and the Tune Herd. So the award will be presented by the camera radio on the with the Tomas Makanumra, Jira Inia, uh, Bruno and Curtin. So that's the Man of the Match award for today's game. Finally sponsored by Radio Nevada. There's still about three minutes plus whatever the, the fourth official will put in the line, but there's a vital score there for Killer Aaron. They lead by one goal, nine to uh, eight points. McTiernan high up the field, the referee penalising Killer Aaron for fouling, and where the ball lands, it'll land about 45, 46, 47 metres out. Morris Sheridan. Will he knock this one over to leave just three between them? But how fair play to Michael Nicholson there. He didn't attempt to have a shot at goal. He fed Porrick Joyce and a lovely one inside. Hughes was in there, knocked it across, and Nicky says, thank you very much. Back of the onion bag. Morris Sheridan then. 42 minutes out. The crowd shouting, come on, Mayo. Morris Sheridan says, take that, and he puts it high over the bar. Four minutes, three minutes there, I'm being told by one of the great Galway footballers of my time as well, Jimmy Duggan, the three minutes left in this county final. One goal and nine points to nine points. Killer Aaron from the north of the county. So I'll till knock the carrot from the city. So I'll till bringing on a sub, Thomas Bork is in the game. 
Every ball has to be fought if it was the last one. John Boylan won that one well and Barry Dooney drives it in. Kevin Courtney, but Courtney goes to the ground. And in doing so, there's a bit of a argy-bargy, nothing serious. The heat and battle of the 2004 championship final. Dennis Ryder going out, Dennis. Three minutes extra time, three minutes going up on the board. The fourth official, I don't know who the fourth official is here today. And number 22 coming on to the uh, Salt Hill team. That's uh, Thomas Burke. Jamie Crow going off over a jet. And right now it's Connor Mack. Gordon, high, high, it's dropping in around the square. Breaking ball. A shot, it goes, somebody gets it. Outside to Shane Armstrong. Sean Armstrong got it left that stage. And up comes Ollie the Great. And Ollie Wilson wins the free. One of the Kilraden players also down injured. But Ollie Wilson threw everything he had to get that ball out. Well played, Ollie Wilson. Big hits going in there in the last 10 minutes. Three minutes, it's flashing. The Salton Aftercarry team, number 10, Jamie Crow, has been replaced by number 22, Thomas Burke. Thomas Burke, I have a feeling. And there will be three minutes additional time, at least three minutes additional time at the end of the game. He could have caught have been blood in him. They're alive on Brescia. On Still one of the Killer Aiden players, Willie Joyce, concerned there, telling his bats to keep it tight. And it's me, Michael Nicholson. Good round of applause. He's up, he's all right. We know they build them tough around Killer Aiden and that part of the world. As Alan Kane takes the free from the 13 meter line. Well, it isn't the 13 meter line, it's between the goal in line and the third about eight is meters out from the goal. Alan Kane, Michael Nicholson, I go back in goal, he says. Mind the house. Referee Porrick Joyce from the Piercer Club doing a fine job. Alan Kane takes the kick and he runs. Back to his goal line, centre of the field, and that's the Wilsons to Porrick Joyce. The man that can just hold the game up with all the confidence of a great player. Tommy Joyce. Tommy Wilson. Do you remember his two points? Nicky Joyce, the goal scorer. Nicky going through. Unceremoniously brought to ground. Referee going over and he's talking to number four, Danny Boyce. He's going to talk to him. I hope the players just keep the head. Keep the head, lads, both teams. One thing the game doesn't want is afters. We have, I'll just keep it cool. Referee doing writing down. And a yellow card. The colour is yellow. Tom, Pat Devan and Stephen and Willie getting his players just cool the tempers down. Don't get involved in any nasty or any handbag stuff at this stage. You're three points up. It's one nine to nine points. And by the way, coming up next Sunday is another big game in Galway, it's the County Intermediate Championship final, that's between Carla Strand and Dunmore and that should be a cracker as well but this is the big one at Senior it's the Championship final the County final Tommy Joyce, he's been known to pop them from further out, this is 45 metres out we're in injury time we'll have a bit of that now, three minutes the board went up Tom Joyston. A mighty, mighty kick. Just 
gone. Kick out, quickly taken free. That was a mighty kick, and John Wilson throws everything he ever had to get that one. Well played, John, to Nicholas Joyce. High one from Nicky Joyce, then Nicky over the bar. Nicholas Joyce. High up and over the bar. He's a player that I really have great time for as Nicky Joyce. Hamill Joyce. And the bomb gets it inside his own hat. He got a push in the back, that won't worry Tom. He joined out now to Michael Nicholson, who's had a right good game as well. Now it's the it's Hughes. Tommy Hughes back to the Wilsons. They're great to hold possession. The referee penalising. Saul Till. Killer Aaron thinks the game. Stephen Flaherty thinks the game is over. It's not over. That's just a free. One goal and ten points. A hand of Jack. Killer Aaron. Lee Coolini. Bohern a throw. To Porrick Joyce. Nicky Joyce scored a goal and four points at least in this county final. The number 19 there, John Boylan. Trying to cut inside, trying to make an angle. There's no way he juts up rugby size, wins himself a rather freaky free, really, because he seemed to go up there and come down. More the case of a line out in another code. Morris Sheridan. Morris has kicked uh, some. Can we please ask uh, supporters, please do not go on to the pitch until the game finishes. Please. The public address there, a pounty, uh, players, appealing to the supporters not to hit the turf until the final whistle sounds. It hasn't sounded yet, but we're well into it now. This game started at nearly 25 to 6. It's 10 past now. Morris Sheridan trying to barge through. Oh, he got a very lucky free there. He was trying to tunnel through. You couldn't blame him, he had nowhere to go. There was a wall of red and white everywhere. The red and white of Killer Aaron, the Hena Jet. Born a throw, Jack Coolini, it's up and over the bar, it's one ten to ten points. Our Killer Aaron about to be crowned Galway champions for the fourth time. 76, 78, 99. Beaten finalists in 2001 beaten finalists last year to have a great record in the championship and there it is and Keller Aaron are the champions of County Galway they take today their fourth county title on a scoreline of Keller Aaron a Hainage and Bourne a throw so till knock the carry 10 points it was some second half and full credit there to Willie Joyce Stephen Flaherty and Pat Devan they got behind their teams but it was the vital moves Michaels are the minor champions someone says passing here that goes to the city but the county the big one it goes back to North Galway back to the heartland of football back to Killer Airden it's Killer Airden one goal at 10 points Salt Hill 10 points
Uh, the secretary of the Killerairn Club, a great day for Killerairn Mary, they're the county champions for the fourth time. Brilliant day for Killerairn, proud day for the parish, long struggle to get here all year, thought Parra could be out for today's match but thankfully he made it back, we're always very delighted to have Parra on the pitch. Well, as far as I've said, I've said it over the last 40 or 50 years that I'm seeing football, I've never seen anyone better than, I, I call him Pardick Joyce, I call him the master. I really don't think we'll ever see the likes of Parik Joyce again. He is the master, as you say, the, ki the king of Killer Airden football. In saying that, we have a lot of good lads in Killer Airden. Um To pick Parik out, I suppose... It they were all a team. Wasn't Nicholas Joyce, Tommy Joyce? Wasn't the Wilsons very good today? Brilliant. The Wilson Wilsons no owe nothing to Killer Airden football, in fairness to them. They owe nothing to us. All over the field, Kevin Courtney, uh, Paul Miskill, the whole lot. The goalkeeper, Alan Kane, a great friend of mine. A brilliant team display by the by the whole panel here today. So you must be, and you have an All-Ireland middle as well, the girls. Uh, that's just it. Sorry we couldn't make it to the All-Ireland today to support her, but things went against us. It was a bit disappointed that they had to have the two games the one day. It was more than disappointing. We wrote a letter to the county board requesting that they would postpone today's county final, but to no avail, I'm sorry to say. So there'll be celebrations tonight, Mary, and Killer Aaron in Galway all over. Congratulations on me on behalf. Thank you very much, Leo. Here now after the victories, just outside the uh, Killer Aaron dressing room, I have two men well involved. One of them was the selector, and one, of course, is the father of one of my great players of all times, Parik Joyce. I have Paddy Joyce, Stephen Flaherty. First of all, I congratulate you, Paddy. Great day for Killer Aaron. Yeah, great day for Killer Aaron, yeah, Leo. And, uh, we're disappointed like we didn't get a bit more time because we don't play again for five weeks from today. Yeah, it was an awful, it seemed very funny really because the Connacht Championship don't come on until the 7th of November. But right now you don't care, you have the county and there's an All-Ireland coming to Galway. Well, that's right, but we've, we've probably one of the best forwards that we'll see again for a while. And that, like we didn't see it for a long time and he didn't get a chance really to show his, show his true form today. There was thousands of young kids, we know it, he from the round tower was to see him. He didn't get a chance to show his true worth today. He would in a week's time to, and it shows because the Dozzy Rules team are waiting for a word from Parik for the last minute before 
they'll even say he's not on that squad. Oh yeah, all I say, all he needs is just one ball, he's magic. Stephen Flaherty, I interviewed you after an over 40s game, I don't know, two, three years ago, we won't say how many years. Stephen, congratulations, that's one of the backroom as the selectors on Killer It must be a great day, you must feel mighty. It's a great day, Leo, as Paddy said, it, I think the players did it for Porrick and, you know, we had no doubt whatsoever all week, but Park Joyce was going to play in this county final. People had him ruled off saying that he'd come on and he'd go there, but he's, he's a great player. I mean, any man that's nine goals and 154 championship points scored in the championship for the county of Galway alone, let alone what he got in league with Galway and Killeran, and to me, I've never seen anything better. But we'll go back to the game for a split second. At half time, you were two points down. What did you and Willie and uh, Pat say at half time? Well, we were quite confident at half time, and Billy was very confident at half time that we were going to win this game. Got two points. Killeran is always a good second half team. They're very fit. Billy has them done some awful training with that team. And the movement that led to the goal, Michael Nicholson was about to shoot for a pint, he passed to Parrick, he threw it into the number eight coming through, I think it was Hughes, and he gave it a cross and uh, Nicholas took it very well. Nicholas, Nicholas was on it like a shot, but that is Nicholas Joyce. Nicholas Joyce played today like he should play every day. He's another county player, you know that, Leo. Well, again, the bomb, what can you say about Tommy Joyce at midfield? You can say nothing about the bomb, he's marvellous. He's, he's unreal. The best player we have, I think, for ability for power and strength the bomb is the man to have and paddy what will this mean now to tommy to every one of the players to the whole panel of 30 odd players that started last january well it means an awful lot because first of all like we're, we're, we're like we're very small in each, in each family all together like we've only seven or eight houses in that team as you know yourself you're with us before and uh, it's hard to keep it going we have about five well seven i think under 18s there today is going to get county middles we're three of them playing and 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 uh, it's just unreal for our parish anyway and now, we have, we have, as you said there, we have the Jaisers, we have the Wilsons. The Wilson, Tommy Wilson is an unreal footballer. He's, he's there for 15 championships with Killer Aaron. He gave his slot again today and he'll give the same again next Sunday. Thank you very much, Paddy. And one last word, Stephen. One quick look over to next Sunday's intermediate final. We are playing my own club, Carlos Lana, playing Dunmore. How do you see that one going? Of course, Michael Donnan is there. He's the jewel, really. How can we cope with him? Uh, I'm sorry to say, Leo, but I have to go against you on that one. I think Dunmore may have that one. Yeah, well, they have that tradition and experience. Well, thanks for your honest, at least, an honest opinion as always. What would you say, Paddy? I just say about Dunmore, like, I mean, if, if ever I was to ask, or ever was, was, was anybody ever asked me about, the, about Michael Donnan, to me, Michael Donnan is the best footballer I've seen. And he's on, and I, like, I mean, he's the one that probably will make the difference if there will be a difference in it. He's an unreal footballer. Thank you very much. Stephen and Paddy Joyce. Stephen Flaherty, Paddy Joyce. Here now I've got the manager of the team, I've got the selector, um, Pat Devane, and of course I've got Tommy Wilson. Uh, Pat, first of all, I'll ask you, congratulations, a great day for Killer Aaron. Thanks very much, Leo, thanks very much. Uh, big change now from last year, we worked very hard at it. We were fierce disappointed last year to leave it after us, and we were fierce disappointed in our performance. Uh, we appointed Billy at the start of the year, we knew he was the man for the job, we knew he'd get the job done, and he got it done today. Willie has a huge record, of course, as a player. He won two championships and yourself did back in the 70s. This must be great. Willie, as manager of the team, you must be absolutely delighted. They carried your shoulders high in off the hollow turf of, of Salt Hill today. Uh, well, I, I, I'm delighted, really, for, uh, for the panel of players that, that have been there, because this time last year they were here and they were beating 15 points. And when you get a team to come back the following year after a defeat like that and win the county championship, that is their tremendous credit. M like my role is only small compared to what the players did last January. And uh, I totally congratulate every one of them. And the man who opened the scoring in the 2004 Connacht final, Tommy Wilson, he got chipped in another great point at the start of the second half. That was a vital point. What did Willie... Pat and Stephen say to you, Tommy, at halftime. Uh, well, all they said to you was just not to panic, that it was going to be a battle. Six points to four that we came out and suits our guns like we did against Montpellier, against Milton in the second half and worked and not give the ball away and that's what we did and we got the goal and I think we, we deserved to win in the end. Willie, you closed up and Pat the holes, the gaps that were creating, that they were creating in the first half, you closed them up in the second half, brought Tommy out into the middle of the field, the whole gap line closed, it, the whole place closed up and you didn't allow them the same position they had in the first half. Uh, well, no, because most teams that play as Killeran at the moment, see, they're afraid to attack us really, and uh, they decide most teams, they'll put two of their on Nicholas or on Parag, which means that we, we can play around with guys, and in the second half, uh, Salt Hill never attacked us really like they should have, and I, I, I firmly believe that they did, they'll probably be there a lot near to it at the end. 
And Pat, what does this mean to you now? Because you've been involved with Killer Rare as far back as I... 35 years. 35 years. 35 uh, years. Well, I'll tell you, it's even sweeter than, the, than when we won it two ourselves. Billy and myself won two back in the 70s, and it's, today is, is the, cream, the cream of the cake. And I, I'm, 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 I'm up in the air for the, for the players, for the players and for the selectors and for the parish. For the parish and, 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 and the supporters out there were unreal. And that's what you want behind the team. And uh, we're, very, we're very thankful and we'll have a great evening tomorrow evening in Bernard Jarrett. Uh, and we'll have Marie Connell as well, but her all her in the middle with us as well. And we look forward to meeting her. Yeah, that was sad the two of them clashed. That was something that possibly shouldn't have happened. We've all said that. I said it at the start of the video today. I never agreed on that happening. But in saying that, great day for Killer Air and a great day for Galway. The West is surely awake. Tommy Wilson. Oh, it is. It's great. It's great because we're a very small parish. Um, we're talking about three miles uh, from five parishes where we're where we're where the pitch is, and it's just great for the for all the young lads, the under eights, under tens coming up. Um, it, you can really see the young lads out there, and it's 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 great for the future, and it's great for the parish like Clareen. Um, Okay, Thank you very much, lads, and I hope next Sunday evening that I'll be able to talk if we are playing Dunmore, as you know, Willie and the big one in the Intermediate Championship. And That's have we... Uh, thanks very much. Well, and on behalf of all the Kildare lads, uh, I want to wish Carol Strand the best up next Sunday in the Intermediate Final, and hopefully they go up the year. I think they're entitled to go up. They're, they're a good young side. I've watched them a lot, a lot of times during the year, and hopefully they, they go up next Sunday. Thank you very much, Willie Joyce, Pat Devan, and Tommy Wilson. Here now, the man was a part, of course, of the famous three in a row, a man I know very well, Pat Donlan. Pat, uh, congratulations last Sunday. I seen you there on the brothers on the Galway uh, team. They were running brothers for 40 years at Crow Park. What did you think of the 2004 uh, county final, Pat? Oh, I thought it was a very good match, really. I thought Killer Aaron played very good. They were very deserving winners. Uh, I mean, they played in the second half there, and they deserved to win. Great, great. You can't beat the countrymen, really. Yeah, you always say that football is very strong um, in North Galway. I remember Pat saying to me, coming out from the league final in 2001, I was very disappointed. I met Pat just outside Crow Park, and I said, Pat, we're after losing the league. It says, Pat, what did you say? It's the... You can't beat the countrymen, and it's you true. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Sam you said sand, matter. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's what really matters. But unfortunately, we didn't do any good in that either. But... Oh, every look and success to Killer Aden. They played very well today and uh, were deserving winners. Well done. Th thank you very much, Pat Donlan. John Hughes, John, I know very well. Jerry Daly passing out there. Yeah. Jerry was the manager. John, we'd be talking, selling sheep over at Marts and things and you talking about farming. We don't, don't give them away back there. <laughs> yeah. Great day for Killer Aden. Great to come back and win a county final after last year. An unbelievable turnaround. Got such a bad beating last year and to come back and beat. We have everything beaten in Galway. That's it. Great year. So you go on now to the All Ireland oh, or the kind of quarter final. Quarter finals, playing the Sligo champions and we play our own brand of football and we're hard beaten on the day and that's that. Killer Air were always hard always beaten. Hard beaten. Congratulations, Thanks uh, uh, John Thanks Hughes. Thanks. I have waited years for this moment to interview what I have seen, the best footballer I've seen in my career. Porrick Joyce, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, how does it feel to capture your second Galway medal? Oh, I'm delighted, thrilled to be honest. It's great. It's great to achieve all I've achieved at Galway, but for me, uh, uh, the most achievements I have is with, with these lads of Killer Aaron here. I mean, the lads I went to school with, grew up with, um, had fights with, had fights for. That's so, so, so what it's all about at the club at the end of the day. I wasn't a great. I was delighted to see you there back on the number 25 today after that injury. You're back again now. It's great. Are you looking forward? Any chance of playing for Ireland? I have a chance, yeah. I mean, I was, um, there was no way, I was telling Billy all week, there was no way that I wasn't going out not field today because I felt okay, even though the medical advice had not to for another couple of weeks, but I felt fine. And there's no way I was going to let the parish down today because uh, I couldn't play the semi final unless the, one of the first championship games I'd missed the club since my 13th year playing with them. And uh, there's no way I was going to let the lads down today because they don't well to get this far. And I thought if I could contribute three or four points, there'd be as much as I could do when I did that. So I'm happy enough for the way it panned out. And now you go on in the club to play, the, I think it's the Sligo champions on the 7th of November. That'll be a very important game. I think it's below in Sligo. Yeah, it's, it's what I look forward to. But I mean, we'd, our aim at Saturday when Billy took over was to get back into um, county final. And in fairness to the lads, after the beating we got here last year, it was a great test of our character to get back here so soon. And after that 15 point trouble last year, to come out this year and win it. Like, I mean, we've beaten great teams on the way. We've beaten Salt Hill twice to win it. We beat Cora Finn and we beat Milltown in a replay. And we beat Mumbai. So the calibre team we've beaten all along has been top class. So, I mean, the teams we've beaten, they would be up in the favourites every year for the county championship. But it's a, it was a hard 1-1. Uh, it was slipping away from us in the end there. But thankfully, when I think we got a ball in the goal there. The two lads flew by me at speed. is, is Michael Nicholson and Tommy Hughes looking for passes, which is a great sign of a team. Five minutes, ten minutes to go. Like, and Nicholson, in fairness, tapped it in. And 
It's great. It's just it's a great feeling to win it. It's great for the club. It's great for everyone around the parish and uh, Smitey. And it's, it's it's just great as well for Maria O'Connell today. She gets her medal as well with, with the Galway ladies. Unfortunately, we would have liked to have gone and see that game, but the powers to be didn't see it that way. But sure, that's the way it goes. Parik, me on behalf of doing the video, congratulations and very best of good luck in the years ahead. Thanks, Leo. The team troops out for a welcome meal. They're going on to Clare Galway. We'll have a quick word with the team captain. Congratulations, John Wilson. Thank you. You must be delighted to captain, be the fourth captain ever of a Killer Aaron team. Delighted to be captain. Um, because as I said out there, it was a great honour to be captain of this team. There, because there's any, there's any one of five or six could have been there. Because there were a lot of leaders, and we showed out there today when the chips were down. We all dug in and we got the result. So it was brilliant. So I have a great night, great celebrations in Killer Aaron. Another man here, the goalkeeper, the man between the sticks, Alan Kane. Congratulations. Good uh, Leo. Yeah, thanks, Leo. It's a great old day today. Like um, we hurt, we were here this time last year in uh, Pier Stadium, and we hurt us an awful lot against Calta. we were hammered out the door, but. As we said, our main objective from last January was to win it, be here in the county final and to win it. And thanks for God, things, things have gone our way on the day, you know. So, Alan, you'll have some celebrations. What's it like between the posts watching the lads outfield? I had stopped bad. You and you know, you've like the last three or four games. I don't think we conceded a goal, so it's been it's been good. We've been playing in front of the lads. A very dedicated bunch. And uh, we go through a game plan, and so far the game plan has been working, and it's great to be playing in front of them, right? And John, you'll have some celebrations tonight. Definitely. Um, We've been probably the last the last month. We've only been kind of after every game. We'd have one night, but I guarantee you tonight we'll definitely or next week we'll make up for it. Now we've got the man of the match in the 2004 county final, Nicholas Joyce, and I have the treasurer of the Killer NGA Club, uh, the man that pays all the bills, uh, uh, Pori Kelly. First going off, I congratulate you, Nicky, on becoming the 2004 Galway man of the match for county final. The goal four points, I think. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, well, it's, it, this is about a team effort. Um, we started last January. There was not hardly anyone was missing. Every train we we slogged through it, and um, it showed there in in the last 20 minutes when they kind of died, we kind of came stronger. We, we kept going, and w we made life as usual difficult for ourselves. Only two points down, going in, w playing with the Gale in the first half. But um, I think we got there in the end. So, what did the boss say at halftime? Does he call? Do you call him Willie, or do you call him Dad? I, I don't talk to him that much, just give out to him. Whenever he gives out to me, it's, and he get, like, he's ruined everyone else as well, so it's the same thing. Uh, as treasurer of the club, you must be proud of Killer Aaron today. Absolutely delighted, uh, Leo. We didn't think this day comes to the same Sunday last year we played Kelter and we were devastated leaving here. So yeah, it, was a, it was a tremendous achievement even to get back to the final, to raise the lad, and Billy has to be confident in that. Yeah, it was a huge, because I think we were beating 12, 14 pints 15, last year. 15, actually. 15 points. So we won't forget that for a long time. But today it makes up for that by a thousand times. But they say you have to lose one to win one. And certainly a great day for Killer Airden. A great day for the parish. Not alone for the football club, but for the whole parish. And that we know the great victory in Club Air today, Marie O'Connor and all our middle. So celebrations go on for a month at least. And Nicky, all goes well for Galway as well with Killer Airden now county champions. He go on next year under new management. You'll be up there in the forward line. You were in hard luck early on this year. You had a great league campaign. You've crowned it now with a county championship. Yeah, it's great end of the year after Galway kind of had a miserable enough time. We we ended up losing out to Tyrone and uh, we lost the league final earlier on in the year to Kerry too. So uh, hopefully we, John O'Mahony um, did a great job. He's left now, but hopefully the new manager can get us all going, get us all motivated again. And uh, I'm sure some of the Salty lads have been with a shout as well. Thank you very much, uh, Parik and Nicholas. And one quick word here with a man that was manager when they won it last, Jerry Daly. Just one quick word. I know Jerry from Abbey, Killer Aaron, manager in ni in uh, '99. Uh, another great day for Killer Aaron. Absolutely, Leo. A brilliant performance all round, especially in the second half. We worked awfully, awfully hard. Got some great scores, and it's, it's a great day for the parish. And I, I'm, I'm proud for Billy and all the lads because. People were knocking on all through the years saying they weren't going to be good enough, they weren't going to be good enough. They're good enough and they will be good enough again next year and, and they're a good team. Lots of young players coming to win the parish and it is a great day for everybody involved with football in Killer Aaron. But just on a sad note, I, I just wanted to... The, the club treasurer this morning, he went hurting his sheep and he found out that he had a dead lamb. It was one he missed at the Dawson job, but these things happen. You win some when you lose some, but we won the match, but part against the better the lamb tomorrow. I know, the, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Jerry, and one last word, how is the refereeing going? Oh, not, not, not bad, not bad. We get a bit of abuse, but sure, that's part and parcel of life. We get it in, in, in every walk of life, so you get a refereeing as well. Okay? Okay, Jerry Daly. Killer Aaron supporters and players will look back on this as one of the great championships they have ever played in. As Porek Joyce has already said, Killer Aaron beat all of the top teams in Galway.
They even drew with Milltown, and it's not the first time a Kilrearn team have drawn with Milltown. They did so in 1978 and won the replay at Joom Stadium. Part of the 78 final was filmed by Martin Joe McGrath, and we say a special thank you to the McGrath family for this part of the video. Yeah. 